Uh, though you will not be able to see him if you close your eyes, you can sort of direct your own documentary about Murray Sendak in your mind as you listen to his voice. If you want to picture what he kind of looks like, picture uh, a wild thing, uh, except uh, with somewhat less hair, uh, uh, twice as childish and monstrous, twice as sweet, much more foul-mouthed, and a hundred times more ferociously uh, wise and brilliant. We call it a portrait of Maurice Sinek, and we try to just make a portrait represent representing who he is and what he thinks about what made him who he is. Spike started visiting Maurice in 2003, and then we might have first taken a camera out there at the very end of 2004. But sort of the realization that the time spent with him was worth documenting and not missing anything. Recording wise, it was more 2005. In effect, you were visiting him just to talk to him about making a movie of where the wild things are, right? I mean, you had been in contact with Maurice for some time about that subject. Every time a conversation I had with Maurice on the phone or in person was just so vivid and full of things I wanted to remember. And uh, and so, I, you know, it was sort of out of that that I, I wanted to start putting a camera and see like the obvious things to try and capture this capture him the way I see him and the way, um, you know, what I love about him. He's kind of emotionally pretty naked the way yeah. the child is. Really visual and and uh, and vivid yeah. and absurd and perverse. He doesn't have kids or grandkids. Like, he doesn't write about, write to a kid. He writes from his experience as a kid. Uh, I passed out some quotes from Marie Sendak earlier, and one of them is marked number one. Wild things made me famous. It made me wealthy, but I never really liked it. The only good thing about this is Spike. I am really lucky to have this in my hands of a sugar nut hook. <laughs> a really crazy kid. He went on to say, it's his, meaning Spike's movie, I'll protect him as best I can, but it will be his problem now. And he said to me, the book was mine when I was your age. It was something personal that I made, and I'm giving it to you to make your personal thing with. People will say, I hope it's up to Mr. Sendek's standards. But that's not what they said when I was breaking the standards. There's something about that book that makes adults a little crazy, that makes children feel like they know someone who's listening to it. As a kid, I, I, I was charmed and enamored by, and also kind of unsure and un unsettled by. And I, I love you know this, this sort of strange charisma of the characters. There, there is a certain con contempt for foaminess yeah. <laughs> that he has, particularly surrounding children's literature. Peter Pan, what a complete lie. What soft brain sentimental crap. When Pan says, oh death, what a great adventure that will be, I want to say, fuck you, you little bugger. On another day, though, he told me how great Peter Pan is, and I'd never read it. He said, you've got to read Peter Pan. And so I <laughs> He's constantly thinking, 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 working yeah. through. And even though he is sort of going over a lot of the old grudges that he had from childhood, he's revisiting them, changing his mind. And the feeling that children's literature kind of chose him rather than him choosing it. He says it's like, it's a peculiarity that he's a children's book author. Right? I said. What? I don't know, that's what he says. What? <laughs> One story that kept coming up was that there were a lot of children down there in Australia with you when you were filming, and um, at some point you went to a party and were playing with the children. And some child said to his mother, um, where's Spike's mom and dad? And she said, what do you mean? She said, well, why doesn't he show up, why doesn't his mom and dad drop him off when he comes over or anything? And she said, you, you realize that Spike is a grown-up, don't you? And he was just like, <laughs> And I told this story to Maurice trying to get his take on it and his reaction. And then Maurice said, My God, the child is either stupid or Spike is a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> so the documentary, uh, Tell Them Anything You Want, is for sale. Well, thank you very much, guys. Thank you.